Murder Weekly now has merch. Find shirts, mugs, and more with the Murder Weekly logo for sale at our merch store. There's free shipping and 10% off now with the coupon NEWMERCH10. Did we mention there's free shipping? Check out all the goods at calaroga.com. That's C-A-L-O-R-O-G-A.com. Or just look for the link in the show notes. Thanks for supporting the show. We really appreciate it. Calaroga Shark Media. Hello, and welcome to Murder Weekly. This episode is titled The Convention Conspiracy Part 2, The Puppet Master. The harsh fluorescent lights of the Chicago Police Department's conference room did little to soften the tension etched on Detective Sarah Chen's face. She stood before a wall plastered with photos, timelines, and hastily scribbled notes, all centered around the enigmatic figure of Michael Reeves, the man found dead at the Democratic National Convention. All right, let's go over what we know, Sarah said, addressing her partner, Marcus Holloway, and the small team of officers assigned to the case. Michael Reeves, 43 years old, former data analyst for a string of political campaigns, presumed dead three years ago in a boating accident, body never recovered. Marcus leaned forward, his brow furrowed. And now he turns up very much dead again at one of the most secure political events in the country. The question is, where has he been for the past three years and what was he doing at the convention? A junior officer raised her hand tentatively. Could it be a case of stolen identity? Maybe our victim just looks like the presumed dead Reeves? Sarah shook her head. Dental records confirm it's him. Plus, we found this. She tacked a new photo to the board, a close-up of a distinctive scar on the victim's left forearm. Matches an injury described in Reeves' medical records from five years ago. No, this is definitely our guy. The room fell silent as the implications sank in. Someone had gone to great lengths to fake Reeves' death, keep him hidden for years, and then murder him at a pivotal political moment. The question was, why? What about the girlfriend? Marcus asked, breaking the silence. Any luck tracking her down? Sarah nodded, a glimmer of anticipation in her eyes. That's our next stop. Lisa Emerson, 38, still lives in the city. I've got an address. Let's go have a chat. The apartment building in Wicker Park had seen better days, its brick facade weathered by decades of Chicago winters. Sarah and Marcus climbed the creaking stairs to the third floor, the smell of old carpet and stale cigarettes hanging in the air. Sarah rapped sharply on apartment 3C. After a long moment, the door opened a crack, revealing a woman with tired eyes and unkempt blonde hair. Lisa Emerson? Sarah asked, flashing her badge. I'm Detective Chen. This is Detective Holloway. We'd like to ask you a few questions about Michael Reeves. The color drained from Lisa's face. Without a word, she slammed the door shut. The sound of a chain lock sliding into place followed. Marcus raised an eyebrow at Sarah. Well, that was subtle. Before Sarah could respond, they heard the unmistakable sound of a window opening from inside the apartment. She's running! Sarah growled, already moving. Call for backup. What followed was a chaotic chase through back alleys and over fences, Lisa proving surprisingly agile for someone who'd appeared so worn down moments before. It ended in a crowded farmer's market, with Marcus tackling Lisa into a display of organic kale. Back at the station, Lisa sat in the interrogation room, her initial panic replaced by a wary defiance. Sarah studied her through the one-way glass before entering, Marcus close behind. Miss Emerson, Sarah began, taking a seat across from Lisa. You want to tell us why you ran? Lisa's eyes darted between the two detectives. I don't know anything, she said, her voice barely above a whisper. Marcus leaned forward, his tone gentle. Lisa, we know about Michael. We know he didn't die three years ago. Whatever's going on, whatever you're afraid of, we can help. But you need to talk to us. For a long moment, Lisa said nothing. 
Then, like a dam breaking, words began to pour out. It was supposed to be a fresh start, she said, tears welling in her eyes. Michael, he discovered something, something big. He said people would kill to keep it quiet. Sarah and Marcus exchanged a look. What did he discover, Lisa? Sarah pressed. I don't know the details. He said it was safer if I didn't know, but it had to do with voting machines, some kind of back door, a way to manipulate results without leaving a trace. Lisa's voice shook. He was going to expose it, but then, then they came for him. Who came for him? Marcus asked. Lisa shook her head. I never saw them, but they were powerful, connected. They made it clear that if Michael went public, we'd both disappear for real. So we faked his death, changed our names. I thought, I thought it was over. Sarah's mind raced, connecting dots. But then something changed. Michael went to the convention, why? He said he had no choice, Lisa replied, her voice barely audible. He said the puppet master was making his move and Michael had to stop him. There it was again, the puppet master. The same phrase from the note found on Michael's body. Sarah felt a chill run down her spine as the scope of the conspiracy began to take shape. As they left the interrogation room, Marcus turned to Sarah. A secret back door in voting machines? If that's true, it could swing entire elections. No wonder someone wanted Reeves dead. Sarah nodded grimly. And now that same someone knows we're on to them. We need to move fast, Marcus. The election's in two months, and if Reeves was right, our democracy is at stake. Their conversation was interrupted by a commotion down the hall. An officer rushed up to them, his face pale. Detectives, you need to see this. There's been an assassination attempt on Senator Rossi. Sarah and Marcus exchanged a shocked look. Senator Rossi was a vocal advocate for election security reform. If he was targeted, it could only mean one thing. The conspiracy went even deeper than they'd imagined. As they raced toward the car, Sarah's phone buzzed with a text from an unknown number. Her blood ran cold as she read the message. Stop digging or you're next. PM. The puppet master had just made his first direct move. The game was on and the stakes couldn't be higher. Murder Weekly is a Calaroga Shark media production. Written and hosted by Aidan I. Flanagan. Produced by Mark Francis. Executive producers, Mark Francis and John McDermott. Portions of this podcast may have been created with the assistance of AI. This show, along with hundreds of others from Calaroga Shark Media, is available commercial free on any player. Hassle free. Just look for the link in the episode or show notes. Calaroga Shark Media. 